Assalamualaikum everyone. Welcome back to another episode. This episode is a very special one because I have a super special guest with me. Please introduce yourself because I'm so excited. I'm so excited right now. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, introduce myself. Okay, I'm Tamara Gray. I'm so happy to be here with you. I am so happy to have you here. If you guys don't know, she's the founder of Rabata. I have been loving Rabata all these past few months. We've been working together. They have amazing just an amazing team, amazing teachers, and I'm so, so grateful to have you here today. So I went on my Instagram and I asked my audience to send in some questions for you. Oh, fun. They came through. <laughs> they came through for you. They sent a bunch of questions um, and I tried my best to condense them. It was like over 100 questions on just Instagram alone and then the other social media oh, wow. is another set. So they don't know it's you, by the way. They're going to find out once I drop this oh. episode that it's you. So that was a surprise factor. So I condensed them into like... So fun. Seconds. So the topic is love and Islam. Very fun. Okay. Very fun. Um, That's a good topic for me right now. I've been thinking a lot about it. So I bet. Good. And right when I was like, okay, I think love and Islam is a good topic. They instantly referred you and I was like, hmm. Yeah, she's gonna do she's gonna do great. I know it. This you're so amazing in just what you talk about and in just in general, everything. Like I have listened to you since I was very, very like in my early preteens. And then you really put me on to like the night prayer and stuff like that. It's it's crazy. I'm living out childhood dream right now. So our <laughs> first question, this is already a really, really big one. Um, but I'm gonna try like you could condense it, answer whatever parts you can in whatever order you want. I just tried my best okay. to condense them since there were so many. So the first question no, is, okay. love in Islam is a complicated topic within itself, and people have loads of misconceptions or tend to make infatuated decisions. I think the first and most important question would be, how exactly do we approach this topic? And how exactly do we find the one? How exactly do we even seek marriage in the correct process to begin with? I know that this is a hefty question, but it definitely covers a little bit of the basis on how we should like perceive and act in this situation. Okay, so like you said, there are a lot of layers in this uh, question. Um, and if if you allow me to unpack it a little bit and start at the top and then sort of get down to the end of the question with what she, there were specific things she's asking. But the first thing that I heard you say, or I heard in the question is love and Islam is a big topic. And I think, I really think love and Islam is a huge topic. I actually am just at the tail end of a huge project I've been working on. I've been writing an Aqidah textbook. And as I thought about what that title would be, I, and, and this is a working title, so I'm not sure that this is going to be the title of the book, but my thought was it should be Aqidah, a love story. Aww. Because, yeah, right? <laughs> you like that? Yeah. I get, I'll, I'll tell uh, our publisher at Daybreak Press, I have one vote for my, for my title here. <laughs> I like it. This is... Um, the, it's different. It's really unique. And it gets the message across. I like it. And when I wrote it, I was really thinking about that. I was really thinking about what is our role here vis-a-vis -vis our role as the creation of our creator? What is that relationship? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this heart that was created to love. And we love. We love many people. We love family. We love friends deeply. We love the men in our lives. We love, we, there's love there, you know, like it's a, it's a very, it can be a very overwhelming re, uh, feeling and emotion, but also it's something we write about, we think about. So it's something really important. It's an important experience of the human being. And I really think that that experience is grounded or is or originates that's what I want it originates in our relationship with Allah and so if we can think about it like that and we recognize that that's the original place of love it helps us to understand and think about what does love mean with my individual human relationships that I am that I am managing dealing with looking for hoping for etc so that's, I think that's where I would start to, and, and could you repeat the last part of the question just so I can get the wording right? Absolutely. So basically it just essentially says, how exactly do we find the one? Because the previous questions were like, yes. how do we approach this topic? And you just covered that, mashallah. 
um, the textbook somewhere, yeah. by the way. <laughs> but it's just how exactly do we find the one? So when we're asking the question, how do I find the one? I, I really want to challenge that sentence. I believe that comes out of generations of training through Disney, <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. where, yes. you know, Disney and sort of the romance novel industry or the that that television industry that has teaching us that there is something called you see someone from across the room, music plays in the background, you slowly walk towards one another circle around each other, you know, whether it's Bollywood or Hollywood, and then birds fly out from your heads and that you live happily ever after. And that's it. It's a, it's not, that's not love. And damaging. I think it, damaging for yes. <laughs> yes, it's damaging. And it's, it's damaging because it's expectations. You know, the other day uh, I was with my granddaughter and we were going to go out to get some food after she, she was in a play. We're going to go and get some food to celebrate that. So inside the theater, we talked about where we might go. And then we went out of the theater. We discovered that it had been snowing really heavily. And that meant that it just wasn't as easy to go to some of the places we had thought we were going to go to. And so she got a little upset. Now, this is a maybe this is a silly example, but I'm making a point from it. She got a little upset because she wanted to go to one particular restaurant and moving her way of thinking to the other one or a closer one took some conversation. You guys, anyone who has been around children knows what I mean by that. And her father sort of whispered and looked at me and said, expectations. And he's, he was absolutely right that when we have an expectation, that's when we are disappointed. When we don't have, when our expectation is more in line with reality, we won't be disappointed. We will be, we'll be so excited by what ha what's coming towards us. So in the question of how do I find the one, we need to find the one, the capital Z O N E, I was gonna say zero, the capital yeah. O N E first. When we find an Akida, a love story, when we truly have that love and we found the one, capital O-N-E, Allah, when we found that relationship and settled ourselves there, then we can find the humans. And I'm going to use the plural there, the humans in our lives that are going to, that we're going to support, who are going to support us, who are going to build family together in the case of spouses, who are going to, who we're going to build friendships together in the case of friends, we're going to build community together in the case of community members. But we need to start with finding the one, Allah Azza wa Jal, really. And, and that is working on ourselves, making sure. And, and I'll tell you what, if we work on ourselves to find the one, to find that capital O-N-E, when we meet the human, now speaking about a husband or a spouse, when we meet the human, then we are ready to be a human for that human. And that is really important. And the Disney framework doesn't teach us that we have to be someone in order to meet and marry someone. We have to know ourselves to bring ourselves to someone else. We can't just be looking for a savior. And if I can add something to this, the other trope, of the issue of I want to find the one, I believe it comes a little bit from Christian culture. And Christian culture includes in it this idea of a savior mentality, that we as human beings need a man to swoop in and save us. And that's that comes from the idea of Jesus, you know, being killed on the cross for the human sins. Of course, that's a Christian uh, thought, Al-Qaeda, it's not ours. But it trickles into culture and we are influenced by global culture. And so this idea that either I can save someone because that's a trope that's dangerous too. If you meet a man and he is just fallen apart, 
Do not say to yourself, I am his savior. Of course, that we would never use that sentence. Don't say to yourself, that's okay, he needs me. I'm going to take care of him. I'm going to fix him. No, don't ever enter a relationship with, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm going to fix it. And you don't want someone to come to you with that either of, I'm going to fix you. Mm. And part of, right? And part of that is that whole savior mentality. So we really don't want to be this idea of, I'm going to swoop in and be cared for, or I'm going to swoop in and take care of. Rather, we want to think about this in a very Islamic sense of, of marriage and building family, building self, growing individually and together throughout that life that we're building together on this earth as we consider and think about the akhirah. That's very true. I'm, I'm processing it. That was very true. Um, that question actually in your response answered a lot of the other ones as well. So the next one that I'm going to go to says, Living in parts of the world that aren't predominantly Muslim, it can sometimes be hard to manage the fear of missing out when it comes to seeing everyone happily fall in love. How exactly should we manage this fear of missing out? I love the way that question is phrased because it really demonstrates an understanding that one of the problems we're dealing with is the fear of missing out. In other words, it's not always that someone is ready to be married or wants to be married with the full responsibility that that brings, but rather that there's this fear, am I missing out on something? And so there we have a couple of issues. Oops, I, I bet you heard that, that loud sound. We are I'm in kind of a construction zone here today as we are expanding next door. Um, I'll just continue and hopefully the sound will be all right. We'll run it through some apps. No worries. <laughs> okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, so yes. So when we're thinking about this, the we live in a time when our lives are displayed in high quality, high color photographs that are often staged. And that staging of those photographs, and what I mean by staged is everyone knows how to stand in a photograph. I mean, where to hold the camera. This is no, this is a, certainly professional photographers know more, but there is a level of skill that is now part and parcel of what it means to live a typical life because everyone has a high quality camera in their pocket. So is that's too much, I bet, isn't it? Or you're okay. Yeah. What is the sound level of that oh, we're good we're is good. It a... trust me we're good we're oh okay good. it's super loud for me but i'm glad that my my equipment here is keeping it out no excellent way. okay so um when we're thinking about this concept we first of all we want to recognize that just like we maybe hold the camera from a certain angle to change the way we look and that's another podcast i think hmm. We also have to recognize that people are staging those family pictures. And when the picture is over, life is going back to normal. And so be very wary of looking at all of the Instagram, TikTok, tweeting, photographs, discourse where everybody is as representative of real life. Because it just isn't. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So the question of FOMO is, I think, very important. Is what is the what is FOMO? You know, one time a gal said to me, I have FOMO, but when I, I have FOMO for being married, she wasn't married. I have FOMO for being married when I look at pictures and when I think about it in a philosophical way. But when I think about the responsibility of marriage, I don't feel ready. And I thought she was so wise, really. I thought that was so much wisdom from her to really be able to understand that she both feels a sense of, I want what I'm seeing everybody else having, but then realizing with herself, she has some personal work to do before she was ready to commit to another human being and to new human beings that inshallah, Allah would bless them with. So 
that question that she's asking, what do I do with this FOMO? Here's my suggestion. I think, first of all, really recognize that the pictures that we're looking at are snapshots of a person's life, just like they are in our life. Second, work on getting yourself ready for marriage. Work on getting yourself ready for marriage. Because when you are ready, that the marriage will come if it is in your qadr. If it is in your qadr, that marriage is going to come to you and be ready for it. You know, like be ready for that marriage to come so that it ends up being a good experience, inshallah. And yeah, and also be careful of getting to that place where you feel so desperate as a result of FOMO that you decide you don't have standards. And while I think that we want to be really thoughtful about standards. I don't agree with some of the things I've seen from some young ladies who have so many sort of rules about what they accept and what they don't, that they miss out on a person who's really good yeah. because they didn't measure up to some other dunya thing that they've had. Like, for example, he has to make more money than me. Well, why? I mean, if, if as long as he's not bothered by you making more money, and you can still respect him with what he's doing, then why is that an issue if you need to have someone who's really kind and good and that's who he is? That's an example. Um, or we could say, uh, one of the other red lines I've seen is, uh, let me think. Oh, he he has to want to travel. <laughs> well, <laughs> You know, I mean, okay, maybe he's not a guy that travels and maybe you don't want someone who wants to travel all the time later. You might change your mind. Is it okay with him for you to travel with your family and sisters if it's really important to you if um, if he really doesn't like it? Maybe that's a that example is probably not one that people fall into too often. So I won't uh, belabor that one. But you, you, you get what I'm saying here. Sure. Just really, sure. yeah, be open to the human being that is sitting across from you on that table and getting to know who he is as a person. I have so much to say about that. Yeah. But in the FOMO answer, don't, you know, when you're feeling that feeling of, I want to get married, make yourself ready to be married, make yourself a person, and then recognize if that person seeking you is ready as well. Because mm -hmm. if you're both ready, you can continue to grow together. And, and then trust in Allah, you know, like that FOMO feeling, somebody else might have FOMO for you. Maybe you are a young professional woman. You just graduated from college. You have a brand new cool job. You, you get to go and do different things for this cool job every once in a while. You, you have some, a lot of surplus income. So you just bought your own brand new Tesla. And you also are, you're at 24 years old. You're the major supporter of your local mosque. And your your voice is being heard in the changes that you want. Oh my goodness, how cool is that? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe some people might have FOMO for you for those things because they're strapped at home at 24 with four kids under five. You see what I'm saying? So life is like that. We all have seasons of our life. So even as you're feeling FOMO or feeling like I really want to get married, that's great. Like this, that's a blessed feeling, but also notice, live in the moment and notice the blessings you have now and recognize that someone else might be having FOMO for you in this very moment. Amazing. I strongly agree. Okay, so our next question. Your answers are so good. I'm just processing it mentally right now. Um, This one is, again, a little bit layered, but I think you have okay. to answer some of these things. In essence, what this question says is that I found a righteous person to marry. They tend to be from a different culture. I know Islam doesn't have an issue with this but my parents do, or I fear the way that my parents will react. I know to some degree that they won't be happy. I've heard stories where some parents tend to not talk to children for 20 plus years over this. It's difficult to leave behind all of your relationships to form a new one. And at the end of the day, with anything in life, obviously there's doubts. In some situations, women who wrote the same type of questions said that I did end up getting married to a guy that I really wanted to pursue. He was from a different culture, whatever it might be. But now I'm having mother-in-law problems setting boundary problems and my husband is of no support either so where exactly do we find the middle line in this drama because oh yeah that's a <laughs> when I was in college I had a professor who was from Poland 
and she was the professor of international economics. Mm -hmm. Brilliant woman. And I remember she was always really on topic. We were always really talking about international economics. But one day she said, listen, if you are ever considering marrying someone from another culture, know that that's going to be hard. Hmm. <laughs> and then she just continued her international economics. <laughs> so I'm imagining she must have been having a hard day that for day. Sure, for sure. <clears throat> But I think it's important. The reason I'm bringing it up is because she wasn't a Muslim. Her husband wasn't a Muslim. A cross-cultural marriage is a cross-cultural marriage, even if you have the same religion. Yeah. And I want to start with that because sometimes we think as long as we're both Muslim, it shouldn't be an issue. Now, look, cross-cultural can be fun. Those issues can be fun. If that's the attitude you come at them with, but they're still going to be there. Cross-cultural is real. Also, another thing about that, <clears throat> if you are American or English or Australian or from New Zealand or someone who was born and raised in America and your ethnicity is not a typical Muslim ethnicity and a convert, for example, mm -hmm. or a child of converts, you will, if you get married to someone from any Muslim culture, that is a cross-cultural relationship. You know, sometimes people have told me, but shockingly to me, well, I didn't come with a culture. <laughs> and I guess what they mean is they don't come with a Muslim culture, but, if, but we come with culture. Everybody comes with culture. So that's my first message here is just recognize that a cross-cultural marriage is a cross-cultural marriage, even if you're both Muslims. Be ready for that. I'm not speaking now about speaking to the parents. I'm talking about the, the young people who are, or the older people, whoever, the two people who are thinking about getting married. This is a cross-cultural marriage. There will be challenges. There will be times when you both think you are 100% right and have no idea why the other person thinks you're wrong. And so be ready for those conversations. Be ready for different things of nostalgia, different memories, different ways of wanting to celebrate Eid, completely different ways of thinking how Ramadan should be celebrated, different things you've been exposed to around family relationships, which brings me now to the parents and the in-laws and all of that. So when you go to your parent, now you let's say you're, you've met someone, this person is a Muslim from a different culture. And you want to go to your parents now and talk to them. And you're really worried because they are, they have communicated to you that they're really only interested in you bringing home someone from the culture that they've, that they come from. So I want to say three things. One is always know your parents want what's best for you and they're worried about you and they love you. As a parent of adult children, it is, it is really hard to, and it's just really hard to watch your child become an adult and not be able to just take care of them. <laughs> it's, it's not easy. Like, so yeah. go to your parents, remembering that they love you. Whatever they're about to say to you is coming from a place of love and worry and concern. So remember that second also remember that, and this might be something you could remind them of, that even within cultures, there are different family cultures. Mm -hmm. So one Syrian family and another Syrian family may approach all of those things I mentioned earlier very differently. Mm -hmm. So just marrying between, let's say, a Somali family and a Pakistani family. Yes, there are going to be cultural differences, but in talking to the parents, it might be helpful to remind and discuss how even within our countries, there are different tribes, different villages, different cities, different ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. And if our parents, like one thing our parents 
are worried about sometimes is will you get married at all? And so also talking about how the idea of me marrying from our village or from our tribe is really difficult because here I am living in America, you know, mm. that those things become difficult and talking to parents about how the culture of being a second generation Muslim is in itself a similar culture. So they can help see how you are really on the same page, that you're looking for someone who's compatible. You're looking for someone who is going to be able to think with you and walk on this path with you. Okay. Now, when the parents are saying, so some parents may just be have reservations. When they just have reservations, don't get mad about reservations. Say, I understand, and I'd like you to meet him and see how you feel about that. And then let, let them have reservations. Don't deny them their parenting. Don't deny them their, their ability to love you in this new way. Mm -hmm. Now, if they have objections that you deem racist or xenophobic, mm -hmm. in other words, it's not, they're not even asking you, what's his religion like? What does he do for a living? What about, you know, the kinds of questions they might ask about a young man from their culture? Like in Syria, they'd be like, what does he do for a living? Does he have a house? Does he have a car? What did he study? If they're not asking those questions and you're worried that they're just dismissing him 100% based on his race or culture, I think it's time to walk away from that conversation, take a breath when everyone has calmed down to come back to the conversation, maybe with help, maybe with some aunts or uncles or sisters or brothers, either sisters or brothers in the family or their aunts, their, their sisters and brothers, if, you, if, you, if they might be sympathetic to you or community members who can just talk about, about what, excuse me, excuse me, about what you suspect. And I don't mean you're going to go to them accusatory. You're not going to say you're acting racist. No, no, no. This might be a blind spot. But just to talk about, say, I don't want to talk about this gentleman. I don't want to talk about Brother Ahmed. I just want to talk to you about the idea of me marrying someone who is Turkish or someone who is Ethiopian or someone who is Malaysian. I want to talk about how you might feel about that and why you have reservations so we can, because I'm not understanding and I didn't want to argue and I don't want you to think I'm arguing with you. I love you. I know you love me, but I really want to, I need to talk this out because it's scaring me about my future because I, I'm feeling really limited and like I might not end up getting married if I have these restrictions. So I really want to understand Come to them with respect and love and your emotion, your real emotion. The, you know, the Brene Brown language, like the story I'm telling myself is you'll only approve of someone from our village. But I know that people in the village don't think like me because I was raised here. So I'm really worried about my, my future. And then let them share their feelings and listen, listen to their feelings, because sometimes it's just a matter of talking those feelings out, and then you'll be okay. Now, in the case where you've done your due diligence and they absolutely will not listen, or actually before that, there's another step. In the case where they're really still resistant, you've done your best, you're really talking, and you have already developed a relationship with this young man. Now, don't I don't recommend you do that. Be very careful because sometimes your parents' disapproval is an answer to your istikhara. So you've been praying istikhara. You've been saying, Ya Allah, guide me. Maybe you've been saying, Ya Allah, I really feel like I want to marry this guy. Please help me. And maybe your parents are just like adamant. No. Instead of coming at that from oh, why are they thinking like this? Why are they doing this? Ask yourself, get curious for a minute. Is this a sign from Allah that I'm not supposed to marry this person? 
is it not about the difference in culture, but about this person that he's not good for me in the future? So ask yourself those questions and be really honest with yourself. And also don't get overly attached too early so that you can't, because once you get too attached, I don't know if you can answer, ask those questions of yourself, honest. Mm -hmm. And you know, we have to be honest. There are predators out there, predator men who pre who prey on young women who are easily influenced narcissistic men who are looking for that personality that will fawn all over them. And that's, you know, we want to stay away from that. We want to, we want to meet men who are going to see us as women and we want to see them as men. We want to see each other in our full capacity as human beings. So that other level, I really want to say, like, really ask yourself the question, is this actually a sign that I need to be paying attention to. Mm. Now, if you've become very attached to him and you've come to the point where you're worried about sinning or God forbid you already have, now is the time to just get married. Just get married. And for that, you will have to follow the Hanafi school of thoughts. It's not um, then you'll have to manage the fallout with your parents who are going to be very hurt. But, and in which case, my suggestion is to be honest with them as much as you can, either by saying, I'm afraid that I will fall into Zina. I'm afraid that we will sin and that I'll go to hell if I don't. I will be a fasiqa. I will be someone who has sinned this grave sin. And I don't want to be that. So I, I need to marry him. Or like, there's something there where you've got to also face the facts of how far you've let this relationship go forward and then decide and then jump into making it an Islamically halal relationship because we want it to be halal. We don't want to be of those who have sinned. And we want that if we have any child from this relationship, we want it to be a child that has been conceived within the bounds of Sharia. Ah. And remember Aqida, a love story. Remember that first love that we have, the love for the one. We don't want to conceive a child with under the anger of Allah. We want to conceive a child under the pleasure of Allah. Okay, so mixed istikhara signals, is that what you said? Well, that's what Ms. the question istikhara. said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so Mr. so in other words, not being sure yeah. and not being clear. And then the other one, what was the second part of the question? Green lights, is that? And green signs. For... <laughs> green signs. Green signs. So like the go signs, yep. right? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um. Okay, great question. Those are great questions. Yes, let's think about this in a real positive way. I think it's really important that you sit down and ask yourself all alone, what do I hope what's the most important thing for me in a man in a husband and i want every one of you who's listening to this to answer at the top three i want him to be a good father because there the the having a family is going to be not always not always is that in the qadr in the qadr or qadr of our of our existence sometimes that's not written for us but most of the time, it will be. And so you really want to be sure that you're marrying someone who you're going to be happy to see as the father of your children. So put that in the top three. Then add two, or two more things. And one of them also, I want you to make it their dean. Yes. Now, you, yeah, you might be surprised a little bit at the way I want you to think about this. I don't want you only to look at outward Dean. I don't, you're not measuring their Dean by the length of their beard. <laughs> and you're not measuring their Dean by their sort of performance of their Dean. Meaning, that, that, meaning measure their Dean by how their Dean has affected their character and their behavior. So, they definitely should be praying. Like that's, that's low level red line. Like someone who doesn't pray, how do you know they commit? 
how do we know that that person can commit to you if they can't commit to Allah? Mm. But after, but you know, but after that, like, I'm really thinking about this. I want you, how does that prayer affect who he is? Is he honest? Is he kind? If you are in a restaurant with him and he's rude to the wait staff, that's a, that's a, red that's flag. a bell that says, yeah, it's yeah. a red flag. Yeah. Mm. Oops. Sorry about that. No worries. Yeah. That's a serious red flag. Um, how does he act with your parents? And you know, one question that I always recommend is ask yourself, how does he act with his mother? How does he feel about his mother? What does he say about his mother? Hmm. Most men will, even though they would say they don't want to, but most men will expect you to be something like their mother. And unless they're very, very consciously not doing that. And so it's really important. Look at the mother, like, it, it sh and how does he think about her and talk about her and things like this? It's really an important part of that assessment. Okay. So let's say he's really nice to his mom. He talks beautifully about his mom. He buys his mom gifts. That is a, that's a green light. A man who's good to his mom and says good things about his mom. You are like, okay, alhamdulillah, this is, this is good. This is good stuff. Yeah. Second, ask him, what was the last thing you bought? You do not want a stingy man. Okay. <laughs> if he told, tells you the last thing I bought was 16 years ago and it was used. Right. I don't know. Like frugal is fine. Saving money, responsible with money is fine, but you don't want stingy because people who are stingy with money are stingy with emotions and stingy with time. So, you know, and investigate that ask around like, is he stingy? Is he stingy? Is he stingy? And the other thing you're looking for with that Dean, because when Dean has entered the heart, you can't be stingy. You got to be generous. And when Dean has entered the heart, the third thing, so you're good to your mother, you're, you're generous and you're humble. You're not arrogant. Mm -hmm. So be very, really, you know, that doesn't mean they're not confident. Confidence is cool, but arrogance isn't cool. Mm -hmm. So really reflect on that. Like, is he arrogant? And if he's, if he's humble and kind, Humble, how do you see humble with wait staff? He's in a restaurant, he's not he's polite and thoughtful to the wait staff. If you are um, where else do we see humbleness versus arrogance? If he's in the road and someone cuts him off in the road, he and he gets road rage, Ew. that's a little scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause that's like temper and arrogance. Like, why did you cut me off? Well, <laughs> Why are you taking it personally? You know, maybe that person's having a bad day. Yeah. Maybe you were afraid, but you replaced fear with anger. But yeah, be very careful with arrogance. So I think if you meet someone who is kind, who is generous, who is good to his mom, right away, like pay attention. That might be that. That might be the man you're going to marry. Everything else is. And, and, and ask yourself, will be a good father for my kids? Like, is he going to be interested in my children? Is he going to be interested in spending time with them? Yeah. Is he going to be excited about that? And what kind of a father is he going to be? People show up as fathers in different ways, just as we show up as mothers in different ways. And that's okay. We don't want to control how they're going to be a father, but we want them to be a loving and caring and interested father. That's the way of the Prophet ﷺ. So we want them to imitate him. Yeah. Yeah. So those are some, those are some happy things to look for, some green lights. Now, istikhara that is confused. The way we pray istikhara is we pray it. And sometimes, not always, in fact, I would say not the majority of the time, you might get a dream. Now that dream might be clear and it might not be clear. Once you've prayed istikhara sincerely, be careful that it's sincere. I'm just going to throw that in there. We don't pray istikhara saying like, actually, I want to marry him. So that's just, you know. No, really be sincere. And Ya Allah, I'm really asking for your guidance. After that, then just follow the signs. When things are easy, or let's say when things are smooth, that's probably a good sign. When there's lots of rocks in the road, the then that's probably a bad sign. Now that doesn't mean you'll never have a rock on an like 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 sometimes you know marriage isn't easy. Getting married isn't easy. A wedding isn't easy. All this stuff takes time. 
uh, sorry, all this stuff has complicated drama and getting to know each other and all of that. So it's not going to be perfect. But as long as there's no serious rocks, then take, or as long as the smooth is more than the rough, then I think that's a sign to say yes. If the rough is more than the smooth, then that's a sign to say no. And I want to say one more thing. Sometimes things can be going along very smoothly. And for the first time ever, you see him in a stress moment. Pay attention because every one of us, including me, we have our stress moments and maybe we don't love ourselves so much in the stress moment. But we have to be able to live with that the way he manages stress. So pay attention to that stress. Is that, does he take it out on you and blame you? Does he start shouting and hitting things? Does he get quiet and say, I just need a minute? Does he want to talk about it? Does he eat? Does he go for a walk? What does he do? Like everyone's doing different things, including us. But make sure that what he's doing is reflective of the Prophet Wasallam, and make sure that it's something you can manage and it's not scary to you in any way. Yeah. yeah. And I think I think then we'll be okay, you know? Inshallah. And it's all right. Yeah, like it's all right. Take it easy. <clears throat> the uh the beauty of really this way of thinking about getting married is the in this way of pleasing Allah, raising a family, a Muslim family for Allah, raising children of Jannah growing together. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So when we all remember, always circle back to that capital O and E so that we really remember that and keep that in mind and don't get too wrapped up in the matters of this dunya because ultimately what matters is their first love story with the first love story in place, then all other love stories will be managed and managed beautifully. Well said. Love that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm so, this has been really fun. Thank you. Yeah, that was mainly all the questions and it was just amazing. Your response were amazing. And I know, inshallah, everyone else will love them as well. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Please have a great yes. rest of your day. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, thank you. Wa alaikum